Hello, I am teaching artist Lauren Welch. Welcome to our stream. I'm here today with fellow teaching artist Deepthi Mohan and Professor Liu. And today we are going over complementary colors. I think this is the last one we have to do, which is purple and yellow. And this is my favorite one, guys. But before we get started, if your studio habits need a kick in the butt, Art Prof has everything you need, tutorials, critiques, and professional development. Clara, can you give us the up till now summary of what complementary colors are about? Well, complementary colors are colors that are across each other from the color wheel. We have videos on red and green and also blue and orange. And basically what makes them so effective is that they really make each other pop. You get really good contrast. Like Deep D, how would you describe the yellow and purple relationship in Kat Wong's comic? Well, what I love about Kat's piece is that she's really using them to show lighting. And without the yellow, the purple might seem a little bit like muted or dull, but it really adds like an extra layer of pop and bringing out the deepness of that purple and vice versa. Um, so that relationship is really key to understanding the setting and the lighting of the entire world that we're living in. One of my favorite images is in the upper right where the highlight is yellow and the shadow is purple and you can see the way these two colors really pop against each other. Karen is saying purple and yellow are definitely my favorite so tell us in the chat who has a favorite complementary color pair like Lauren do you have one I know you like all colors but <laughs> well, no I would agree with Karen purple and yellow are also my favorites and that is because they have a really unique relationship in the Munsell system in the Munsell system there is you get a tonal number each hue gets a tonal number or each color does and I think one is really light and nine is really dark. It's one through nine. And yellow, our basic yellow is at a two and our basic purple is at a seven. So they have a really high level of contrast between them, which makes them perfect for showing things like light and shadow. And so it's easier for me to understand this color pairing and how to use it in paintings. And I use it a lot in my paintings because I'm not thinking about color really. I can think about the tonal stuff going on and the color at the same time. Deepti, you got a favorite complimentary color pair? Huh, I don't know. I was gonna say I do like purple and yellow, but it's funny, they were my high school colors, purple and yellow, and I hated it in high school. Um, but now, like, now that I'm working more, I agree that, like, when working with light and shadow, purple and yellow seem to work so wonderfully together. Cat's piece is a really good example of that. Um, so I find myself when I'm working in complementary colors that purple and yellow are the ones that I gravitate to. So I guess this is a perfect stream for all of us. <laughs> Lauren, why don't you introduce Sandy Skoglund, who actually is a photographer. I know looking at these photos, they look like an installation piece, but Sandy Skoglund takes photos of the installation that she creates. Uh, well, I think you already introduced her there, Clara. Yeah, I looked at Sandy Skoglund a lot when I was in college because I was also doing pieces that were had a performative or install element, but were actually about the documentation and so she sets these up in a very specific way to create these color compositions that are generally using clashing or complementary colors or values so this is one of the purple yellow pieces um and but she's also got one that's got a bunch of green cats everywhere and she uses like weird animals and stuff to get these different forms. And so this is really about formal elements, even though it looks like fashion photography almost. I just think bad 80s music video is what it makes me think of. I don't know. It reminds me of the Gangnam Style 
music video where the guy in the yellow suit gets out of the car and starts dancing. <laughs> All right, Deep D, how about this next artist, Gerald Gibbs? So Gerald Gibbs is a contemporary painter that does a lot of paintings on the figure um, and kind of like just slice of life imagery is how I kind of interpret it. And both of these paintings by the artist kind of show a really different side of the use of purple and yellow. In this one, the yellow is really punchy and super saturated. And then there's just like the sliver of purple, but that is also really punchy and saturated. And I think they complement each other really nicely. That shadow would be completely different and our eye would be drawn to completely different areas if that purple wasn't there to battle the yellow. And then in the next piece by the same artist, it's a lot more muted. Um, yet they still balance each other out compositionally and like create this nice level of weight in the piece. And how about this artist who's sort of similar in that they're a contemporary artist who works in figurative painting? Yeah, it's a similar kind of uh, style and theme with the imagery. Here, I think the purple and yellow work a little bit differently in the sense that I see the purple as being a little bit more muted while the yellow is quite punchy, but we also have some blue coming in here to also balance things out. But I think the purple being very textured, like literally having a lot of textures and the yellow being brought into that also kind of shows the harmony between purple and yellow and how they're balancing each other out and grounding everything in the same space. Yeah, Deep D, I wanted to, to point make a point on that too you mentioned that blue being this middle space and i think you're right it's this is like an excellent mediator here and actually for me it's causing the yellow to be toned down it's raining in the yellow a little bit because they are of a similar tonal value there is this this fighting between them that kind of mutes both of them so that my eye really focuses on that deep purple of the figure and that purple and those browns there for me are what are giving the punch and not necessarily the yellow. The yellow is just helping that. Also, I think this is a really good example of value because the purple is very dark in value compared to the yellow. I happen to like purple and yellow because I feel like the value between the two is more dramatic in general. I don't really like red and green because I feel like the value is very similar. So I happen to be a purple and yellow person, but I think that's definitely something you guys need to think about with color that frequently gets forgotten about, which is value. How do these colors relate in terms of light and dark? Jesse says, I'm partly colorblind. I don't see the difference between brown and green. Do you have suggestions for what to do? Any thoughts, Deep Deep? Hmm, that's really interesting. I, I'm, I, I'm not sure what to say because I'm not colorblind and I can't like empathize with that. But I do think that um, there, there are artists that I know of who are colorblind and work with that as like a, a strength um, and focusing more on like how they interpret colors. So I'm, you know, I, I don't feel comfortable giving you advice on that because I can't empathize. But I do think that like, you know, lean into what you know and what you feel comfortable with. But I think Lauren has some suggestions. I can kind of speak to this a little bit. I'm also not colorblind, but my partner who's also an artist is colorblind and I've worked with colorblind artists in the past for color pieces. And I think that you you do you, again, kind of like deep to you do you as far as what you think looks good. I do think that there is... A, it depends on the color, the type of color blindness, because there are many, and it depends how how color blind you are. There's just a little bit of weakness versus total red green color blindness or green weak color blindness. But you, so there are different palettes that end up showing up often in these in these kinds of works um, that are totally really cool and very refreshing to see. They're not what some people with different color vision have. But one thing that might be helpful is to focus kind of like what we've been talking about on on tonal, on, on value range rather than the colors themselves. Because as long as you have one logic or one language in there, 
then the rest can sort itself out a little bit. If your tonal range is all over the place and your color range is all over the place, then things start maybe looking a little bit muddy or there's not a hierarchy. But having that focusing on tone, which isn't affected by colorblindness or not green weakness, at least generally speaking, you should be able to get a hierarchy in there. Yeah, like certainly is saying, I wouldn't worry too much about the colorblindness, just focus on values and go with the flow. So that's a nice concrete place to get started. All right, let's talk about Euphoria. Deepti, have you seen this show? I keep hearing about it, but I've never watched it. Yeah, it's it's kind of blew up. It's an HBO Max show, I believe. And um, it's about Gen Z uh, kids, I think, and just like high school life and stuff, but it's it's a little bit heightened with a lot of um, drugs and, and stuff like that. So a lot of color play comes into like play in this show because they're trying to give us like a visual taste of this, the mental state that a lot of these kids are in as we're seeing on the screen. <laughs> so deep, deep, uh, not deep, deep, Lauren, <laughs> how would you describe the purple and yellow relationships here in terms of live action film. It's a very different thing because a lot of the color is created by actual purple lights as opposed to painting where everything's fabricated. Yeah, this made me think of our previous conversation on blue and orange because I think that we had discussed that blue and orange was the most often used color set in film. So you're getting a slightly different world happening here with the the purple and yellow it feels a little bit contemporary i don't i can't think of older films really that use the purple and yellow a lot but it guys in the chat if, if you can think of some purple purple and yellow old films please let us know i think that it just gives this um, it reminds me of internet colors and popular internet colors used right now, which goes along with this whole Gen Z lifestyle thing. What is the Gen Z lifestyle? I don't know what that is. <laughs> I, I don't, I, you know, I don't know because I'm not Gen Z and I feel like an old millennial just looking at you kids. <laughs> but I definitely <laughs> see a lot of purple, yellow color scheme things going on on websites, I guess. I mean, the interesting thing about that show is that every, like, it's a very heightened version of being that age. Like there's a lot of strife with like relationships, gender identity, just family relationships. Like I said, draw, like it's, it's very, very heightened. And I don't know if that's what life is like now for Gen Z, but it feels really heightened. But I think the choices of color that they use, um, which are really like contrasty and intense and the makeup and everything all adds to us feeling that level of heightenedness in, in the show. It wouldn't feel the same if it was just shot like a documentary film, for example. I, th I think also what would be interesting to compare this film to is other teen, teen drama shows that have happened in previous generations. So the one that was before this that relates most closely to this is probably Skins, which is the millennial high school drama version of this and then prior to that even was uh Degrassi and so Degrassi I don't think was thinking about color at all that was a little bit less slick but you can now, wait though are you talking about the hardcore old 80s Degrassi or the reboot <laughs> Oh, I don't even know. They all blend together in my head. I can't even remember. I, I watched Degrassi all the way through when I was in high school. And I've watched Skins all the way through. <laughs> so they all blend together even between the shows. But I think that you can track a certain sensibility from one to the next to the next and what that era values in terms of both color schemes and, you know, fashion in general is a big deal. All right, let's take a look at Doho Sa, who I just love his work. He's a contemporary Korean artist, and he's extremely prolific. What I'm showing you guys is just a little slice of what he does. So if you are into installation work, 3D pieces, look up his stuff, because his work is really unusual. 
He's been doing a lot of these pieces in apartments where he'll do rubbings of the apartments. I don't know exactly how these are executed, but he's also created these large scale architectural pieces, but I think they're made out of fabric. And so they have this very ethereal quality to them, which is unusual. A lot of people don't associate buildings <laughs> with being ethereal, but you can see how that one piece of purple it feels like you're entering another dimension. What's your take on that purple space, Deep Deep? Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. It feels like a completely different world almost. And when you're living in one's very specific world, which is this like greenish yellow, that the contrast is so heavy. It feels like a completely different alternate universe um, that you're entering. And just having a smidge of it adds such a, level of mystery and um, intrigue, which is really interesting. This also reminds me of, I, I don't know, can you go into these spaces, Clara, or are they just photographs? I think you can go into them. I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think they're like Sandy Skoglins, which are you set it up and then take a photo. Okay, because I was thinking about the actual experience and the eye adjustment that might happen in a place like this, certainly in a Terrell piece, where your eyes get used to or try to compensate for seeing a whole lot of, say, yellow at one time. And so when you move into a purple space or then look over at the purple space, it creates this shimmering effect because your eyes, the, the rods and cones back there get really tired and need to adjust to the next thing. And so you get these weird, what they call impossible colors where your eyes, it's, it's not what's actually there, but your eye is trying to account for both at the same time. And so it's another way to think about maybe transparency, transparency in light versus transparency it's happening with your eyes versus transparency and pigment. Victor Prince says, why is this photo so pleasant and sickening at the same time? Well, Deep Deep, why do you think this yellow has that sour look to it? I think it's because it's not just like a pure yellow. There's like a hint of a pukey green in it as well. But also I was just thinking about how it really distorts your perception of a space that's kind of usually um, recognizable to you. I was thinking about being in here, everything is the same flat color from the floor to the ceiling. And the only like relief that you get are these fluorescent bulbs, which are kind of sickening in general. And then this glimmer of hope in the purple. So it almost makes you feel like that is an area of hope for you. And you're in this space of just, I think I would be really disoriented to have this like really flat yellow all around me because that's really not what we're used to in our day-to-day -day life. All right, let's take a look at this next artist, Kasu Seidu. I'm sorry, I'm sure I mispronounced that. But Lauren, this is a totally different scenario. The Doha saw image was a flat colors and it was a space. This artist has a lot of pattern, which I'm sure you can talk about. So how does the color function in the context of such intricate patterns? Well, when I see a piece that is like this, that has so much imagery that is enveloped within the patterns themselves, First of all, you know, it kind of reminds me of, of Klimt a little bit, but also the thing that I'm thinking about between those two artists is how the imagery within them and the colors used within them probably have some meanings that are beyond just a, a what do you call it, a formal element. So there are for formal things going on here where the darkness of the skin really pops out and it has a strong contrast in that previous image, the yellow one. And so we're really able to focus on that. Whereas in the next image, that purple against the darkness of the skin really makes them meld together and almost interweave into the pattern. But I also want to know, say, why yellow was chosen and why purple was chosen for some areas and why some things are green versus orange in this. I feel like there are, are multiple readings probably that 
could be happening here? Well, we haven't really dug into this yet, but a lot of colors have very strong associations. Sometimes they're cultural, sometimes it's an object. I mean, people were saying early in the chat that purple and yellow makes them think about Cadbury cream. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think here, as people are saying that this work does remind them, Harrison says of Klimt, B. Dog Boo says I'm getting early Roman fresco vibes. And so I do think there's this almost shimmering quality to this image that is so different in the other ones. So what's your take on maybe the interaction of the purple and the yellow here, Deep D? I think where I see it being the most important is that in this artist's work, the pattern is can be really overpowering. It's everywhere, this kind of swirly shape. And I, I'm not sure if that pattern has a significance. I know the artist is um, Senegalese, but um, I'm, I'm not sure if the color or the pattern has any cultural significance or, or means anything specific to the artist. But these big um, blocks of purple and yellow really help, like Lauren was saying, draw our eyes to masses that are like important for the figure, to register the figure, to register the composition, and to bring our eye around the whole page. Because if everything was you know, a similar value or a similar color scheme, the pattern might become too overpowering to that to that being the only thing that we could really focus on. So the color really balances out the pattern. I see both things working hand in hand in a really wonderful way. So Jerner says, yes, the patterns are definitely African and yellow is used a lot in African fashion. So I would just say, you guys, when you're using these colors, don't just think about, okay, what do they look like? I mean, that's definitely important and think about saturation, all that stuff, but think about maybe the history of that color and maybe how that relates to whatever it is you're trying to communicate in your work. Okay, Deepti, this is your friend. So why don't you talk about their work? Yeah, so this is one of my best friends, Vrinda Zaveri, and she is a really wonderful, um, Indian animator and illustrator. And this piece she made as a personal project to celebrate Holi, um, which is an Indian festival where uh, it celebrates like color and it, you go throw, um, you go outside and you throw color on each other. I'm sure people have seen it's very like viral um, and everyone is covered in color, but she made this in a celebration for Holi. And in here, I think the yellow and the purple work really well together, not only because the purple is representing the actual powder that people are throwing on each other but i think it brings it pops the figures out more than i think they would if the purple was not there because of the intense contrast between that yellow and the purple in the foreground well lauren can you maybe talk about how sometimes something can look red, but because it's next to yellow, it can feel more blue. Like, I really think colors are like people in that people change their personalities a little bit, depending on who they're hanging out with. Like, my kids are always saying to me, you always have that art prop voice. <laughs> like, they hate my art prop voice. I think because it's not the voice I speak to them. And so it probably makes them a little bit uncomfortable. So how would you describe that relationship here, Lauren? Are, are they bouncing off each other in that way? Well, yes. I mean, all colors, no, no color is static. Let's just put it that way. They are all influenced by each other and something that can appear super muted in one place is, could appear very saturated in another place. And this is certainly true with complementary colors. As soon, even if you're using a really muted yellow with a muted purple, they are going to feel very saturated because they have that high contrast thing going on. They're so opposed to each other that you're really aware of the differences between them. And so when you have pieces like that, maybe what would be interesting is to pull out colors from that piece and see, oh, is this really as saturated as it seems? Because, I mean, it's happened in all these pieces so far. We're really into the color. I mean, that's what the stream is about. But in some of these pieces, it's not all that saturated. I'm sure it just feels that way. Yeah, and I would just say, when you guys look at color, always look at them as a grouping, 
of color. I hear a lot of people, I'm trying to mix the right green. And I'm like, well, I need to know what's next to that green so we can figure out that relationship. So when you're color mixing, you really have to think about the surrounding area, not just that one color. That's when it gets very confusing. Okay, Deep Deep, how about photographer Petra Collins? So Petra Collins is a really like um, modern contemporary photographer who does a lot of fashion photography, directs music videos and works a lot with colored lighting. And it reminds me a lot of the euphoria images we saw. She also brings in a lot of like technology in her work. And so in all of these, you really get, it's it's very similar in my head to euphoria where you're getting a sense of like clubbing and, and feeling like you're in this alternative universe, like um, just through an image. And then I love this photo of Zendaya because it's a lot more muted here in comparison to the previous images we saw. That one gives you this intense impact of like being in an alternate universe, how you kind of feel when you are, you know, out dancing. Whereas for Zendaya, it's this really intimate image we're having that's so soft and is almost filmy. And the color scheme here, the purples and the yellow are working together in a really subtle way to give her this like glow and make things even that much more intimate and, and soft. Harrison is asking, would you say that because we only have a few names for colors, it limits our ability to describe their nuances? Lauren, this is definitely for you. Yes, totally. And it can even limit our ability to see those nuances. I think, I mean, there are, there are lots of schools of thought on this, but if you want to look into color history or even just color cultures within your community or your school or anything else, you'll notice that attention may be given to one set of colors versus another, and thus your, your language is, you know, specified towards those colors. I found when I was in college, I had a really basic understanding of color to begin with, and as I went along, I got... When you get paints, when you get a lot of paints, suddenly you know a lot of different colors. Now I know the difference between what a cobalt looks like and what uh, manganese looks like. And before, these are very, very close shades of blue. Before I would just say, oh, that's blue. That's also blue. I wouldn't really see the difference between them. It's, it's a tricky thing. It's also very plastic. W315 says, see how deep these shadows are purple compliment Lauren's sweater and hair. <laughs> so this is great. You guys are starting to recognize colors in real life. I mean, you can walk around, see where you see complementary color pairs. It's really fun. It also keeps life more interesting, in my opinion. I, I hope that somebody screenshots the three of us together, because I think it's actually a really good color palette, and I want to use it. <laughs> Okay, let's look at this next contemporary figurative painter, Jonathan Linden Chase. And I'm really happy to look at this image and actually the image that we had before because these are really muted colors. We, we've looked at a lot of like, I'm in a club, and it's super bright, cadmium, lemon. And these are just much softer colors where the yellow I think is verging on almost looking like a brown. But again, it's like because you have the purple behind the yellow, it makes that feel less brown. And so think about how colors affect each other. DP, how about this one where the colors are more saturated, but they're still on the muted side in terms of the dark purple? Definitely. I mean, I was thinking about what you were saying about that dark purple in terms of colors affecting each other, because there are actually areas in that dark purple that when put next to something else might actually feel like it's really bright and really saturated. And um, here, I think the importance is value because all the values of the purples and the reddish purple is really making the yellow pop. And I think that is what we're drawn to in this piece is like the idea of like illuminated windows and illumination. So I think the way that the purple is working here is to really make the yellow act as a light source and really pop. Deepti, you touched on something there that Michelle is asking about. I find I can't distinguish warm from cool. Is it a relative concept or just a hue thing? Blues, cool, reds, warm. 
Can, can you describe further uh, how cool versus warm works within a one color? I feel like you should answer this honestly, but like, <laughs> I, I, I find differentiating warm colors and cool colors actually really difficult. And it makes more sense to me when I'm comparing two colors because then I'm able to see the colors broken up a little bit more and see which one have more warmer tones and cooler tones. But Lauren, I think you should honestly answer that question. <laughs> I, 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 I booted it to you because I also have trouble with it. I'm going to take it since neither of you guys are capable enough to describe the difference. <laughs> I think it boils down to this. You could say fundamentally, warm colors are reds, oranges, and yellows. Cool colors are greens, purples, and blues. That's the most basic generalized version you can make of warm and cool. But the thing is, between each of those colors, you can have a warm red and you can have a cool red. For example, when I think about cadmium red, to me, that's a very yellowy, very warm red. If I think about alizarin crimson, alizarin crimson is almost purple. It's a very dark, cool red. And so you can think about it in terms of those essential basics. But I think once you start getting into the individual colors, it does start to become just a lot more nuanced than what we think it is. So it, it can work on a very superficial level. Red is warm, blue is cool, but I don't think it's that simple. I think there's a lot more going on. I, th I think a way that has been helpful for me to think about once you get into individual colors is, so say you're, you're looking at a yellow and you want to distinguish a warm yellow versus a cold yellow. A warm yellow, like a, a deep cad yellow, that's that's reddish. It has a reddish orangish tone to it. You can think of it as a, a red yellow or a orange yellow. It leans that way. You're looking at a cool yellow, a lemony yellow. Hansa's kind of cool. That's tending towards green. It almost feels like green. And what is green? Green is on that uh, green blue green, blue, purple side of the spectrum. So that's cool. So green, yellow versus a uh, red, yellow. And sometimes the color can bring it back to that large generalized scale that you can work from. Let's look at a textile artist, Olga de Amaral. I don't know a huge amount about their process, but as you guys can see, there's a sheen to the actual material. So how does that play out in terms of like a three-dimensional object, DP, as opposed to like a painting? Well, this is actually really interesting. I think this artist is a Colombian fiber textile artist that works really large scale. And I think the gold here is actually gold leaf. I think they incorporate gold and silver leaf, which uh, is really interesting because I think interacting with them in person would have a completely different experience than looking at an image. But how I see it in like this 3D world is really how light affects these colors and how light affects it in an image, but also how you would see it in person. Um, the sheen to it is a direct result of how light is affecting the gold and maybe muting the purple as a result or playing with that balance. And the high contrast in those two colors are really what makes the image pop and work in the space that it exists in as well. But Lauren, what do you think? Well, that your description and these works just reminded me that we really should have included that optical illusion of the the gold white dress versus the blue. Oh. Black. <laughs> I think that Look it up if you guys don't know. Look up blue gold dress. You will find it went viral I think a couple of years ago. It's the same dress, but it's really a contextual thing that has to do with shadow, that has to do with sheen, that has to do with what time of day you're thinking of and how color and sheen affect a three-dimensional actual image. <laughs> so I'm having that effect here where this, I can read that it's 3D, but I actually am uncertain about what it looks like because my context is not there. I, I just have the object. Maybe it could be something where there's a shadow on it and it has a, maybe it's, it's whitened and gold versus blue and black. 
Neil is asking, is it necessary to try all those different kinds of blue or can I just stick to phthalo? I think you should, Neil, because you don't know what you might be missing out on. I mean, I don't think I would put 18 blues on your palette. I think you can maybe start with maybe two. Like I happen to really like cerulean blue and ultramarine blue because they're very different from each other. And Lauren, did I tell you I'm dating Prussian blue, but I don't think it's going to work out. Both of I us think... are dating Prussian blue right now. Oh God, Prussian blue is like so manipulative. It's very <laughs> intense. It's just sometimes, Neil, eventually you're going to get to a point where it's like playing Pokemon a little bit. You, you, you mix all the colors that you can get from your phthalo blue and you realize that there are others out there that you, you still need. And so that only other colors that you can trade for work out for. Ultramarine blue gives you a totally different set and manganese blue get a totally different feel than phthalo. So it's get your basics done, then branch out. All right, Deepti, let's take a look at these editorial illustrations by Alex Kiesling, who was a former student of mine. I think he was in the same class as you too. He was in my year, yeah. We weren't in your class together, but we definitely had some classes together. Alex is a really wonderful illustrator who does a lot of editorial work and just is super impressive. We actually have a stream that he was on um, to talk and he talks about what it takes to have a freelance career in illustration, which you all should check out. Um, what I am really noticing in this piece with Alex's is how the purple and yellow are working together to create light and shadows, which is something we haven't really talked about. But in the honeycomb, especially, sometimes when you're looking at shadow, like you see the shadows in the yellow and it looks kind of brownish. But when you look at the purple and the bees that are kind of like receding in the background, you start to notice the shadows are actually a mixture of these purple and this yellow. And when I started learning about complementary colors, what really started making sense to me was how you can show light and shadow by just mixing complementary colors. And that's what I love about this piece, because also not only is it in this honeycomb shadow, but it's in the light on the illumination of that main bee in the center. And it's working to create depth and illum and like show us where our light source is because even though these bees are receding in space, they're getting more and more illuminated because that's where our light source is. So we're actually seeing more of the purple. So it's all working to just create a really interesting and clear light and shadow relationship in this piece. Lauren, how do you see this, this editorial piece? I just read those colors as as black on the bees and it wasn't until I was I, my impression when this first came up I, I was like why why is this in here it's mostly just yellow and then so you just changed you rock my world there <laughs> now I'm actually noticing some of the purples in there and I I am still just kind of a little bit flabbergasted I think that it's important that you brought up that a lot of these colors the, come from mixing the two together to create these browns and stuff. And those are an equal, if not more important part of creating a believable and not super clashy Cadbury egg -y <laughs> color, uh, complementary color palette. I think it's a good point that a lot of color is training your eye to see that difference. Because yes, at first glance, if you're not looking that carefully, you go, oh, it's black, not a big deal, right? And it, it took a minute to really see that color. So I would say you guys, in addition to mixing color and trying out all different colors, train your eye to look really carefully for those subtleties. It's a huge part of gaining your sensibility in color. Deep D, how about prints? <laughs> Well, you can't think about prints and not think about purple. Um, so we have to include prints. But I love this um, image. Is, I think it actually ended up being a movie poster for like the Purple Rain film. But what I like about this image is that the purple and yellow are working so well to like create a narrative in this piece and draw our eye. Like Prince, of course, is purple because Prince is purple. <laughs> but you would, I don't think you would notice that figure that's kind of in a silhouette on, on top of the stairs, if they weren't backlit by this extremely contrast, con, contrasting yellow. <laughs> um, because 
Prince is just so out there on this giant motorcycle, it's Prince, um, in the purple and completely illuminated by this fog. And your eye is just stuck there and there's all this text underneath. And But I think you're drawn to that other area because it's almost like that um, installation we saw with the purple door earlier in the stream. It's like this area of hope or like this, this different area. And then you're drawn to this figure and then the narrative completely changes and you're you know, having all these questions, but um, I don't know. Are you a big fan of Prince Lord? <laughs> I, <laughs> no, my, my person of choice is David Bowie, of course. But yes. I, I did want to say that with Prince, Prince is, is an example of color and culture combined to create a, 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 a language, I guess, or, or, there is a very specific purple that is that kind of it's it's a little bit it's it's in between warm and cool i think and it has a little bit of 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 white in it i think of that smoke in the earlier image a bit except slightly warmer um that is very prince you you see that color and you think prince i remember when he died on the news they just had a banner across that was that one purple and you just automatically knew who and what they were talking about and even when i'm painting it i'm like oh this is the, this is the prince color <laughs> so these associations are are really important and they don't have to just be these these uh deep spiritual ones or or ancient type ones you can also think of of contemporary things kind of like how we were talking about oh what are the colors of gen z um color can be very associated with time or a person all right let's take a look at helma off clint who has really gotten a lot more exposure lately i think there was a huge museum show of their work recently and it's really cool to look at the purple and the yellow in the context of a much flatter method of painting and also images that are a little bit more abstract. Sometimes I think that color is easier to see in an abstract image because you can focus more on the color as opposed to the other images you get distracted by the figure and all the other things that are going on. What's your take, Didi? I agree. I also feel like sometimes in abstract images, it's easier to see those subtle nuances of like where there might be some yellow in the shadows or the yellow in the background. Like in both of these pieces, I'm kind of noticing the flatness of the purple in the background. But as you spend more and more time with that background, and I'm sure when you see it in person, it's even more obvious, you'll start noticing the subtle nuances of like different colors that are there. And you're seeing the blues and the the cooler tones in that background and um, where that yellow might come in. And because it's abstract, it also draws our eyes to areas that might have more significance. But in this piece, especially I'm noticing like in the bottom, in the bottom like strip, there's like some real like strong yellows in that purple that you can pull out, um, but it takes some time. But without that, I think it would be a whole different piece and the yellows might not work in such harmony with the purples, but it, it's it kind of goes to show like how much thought is actually put into abstract work where sometimes people are like oh pish bosh but like there's actually so much going on. John Murph says these are really interesting because they've been mixed with slight gray. Well I think it gets you to really appreciate the less flashy colors. I mean if you look at Prince's outfits, you almost can't look away. It almost like blinds you. But I do think that these get you to appreciate like that little shift. Like look at the difference between the pink quote unquote petals at the top. It's really close to that purple. And I do think it's easy to get swept away by the really bright colors. These duller colors, they're underappreciated. Do you think so, Lord? Yeah, I also want to point out with Hilma off Klimt that these paintings and the colors and the uh, symbols in these paintings were in employment for a larger project, a larger, I believe it was religious kind of project, or she was developing almost a, a painting manifesto. And there was a big show at the Guggenheim about this. If you guys saw it or 
read about her because she is very hot right now. Uh, you, you might be able to fill us in a little bit about that. It's been a while since I was there. But these, my impression was that these types of purples, beyond an abstract getting something to look beautiful together, they had a particular meaning and the proportions of them together had a particular meaning. And Neil had mentioned earlier, is it calligraphy? It's calligraphic looking. It's not actual text though. Levi says, how do you establish the relationship with complementary colors and style? Deep Deep prefers drawing quote, ugly figures. So does this involve subverting complementary colors or no? Deep Deep. I think that complementary colors can work with you regardless of your style or whatever you're going for. It's just kind of the relationship that you're establishing. For example, the installation that we saw in the beginning, we were talking about how that yellow is kind of sickening. And there's a specific reason for that yellow being sickening. It has this greenish cooler hue to it. It's used in a way that's really overwhelming and overpowering. And the purple may, it might even add to that sickening because the purple is kind of like a muted, nicer color. Um, so it heightens the sickeningness. Whereas something like Hilma's pieces, they're more muted and you can live in that space a little bit easier and um, it's not as jarring. So I think that complementary colors can work regardless of if you're trying to make what kind of uh, response you're trying to elicit from your audience. It's just a matter of the relationship and the intensity and exploring and playing around and seeing how they can work together. All right, and we have this artist, MF Hussein, who does these quirky, almost primitive looking drawings. And they're pretty limited color schemes and they're so different. Like this is a very bluish purple. This purple is very reddish. And so, oh my God, the range of how that quote purple <laughs> can be transformed is really remarkable. What's your take on that, Lauren? Here, I find that the purple is doing a really excellent job defining negative space for these figures and creating a, a backing that allows the figures to play however they want in this space. It also reminds me of of sculpture a little bit. I'm thinking of the Elgin marbles for some reason, <laughs> you know, where you have that giant, I, I don't know what you call it, is it a, a freeze? I don't know what That's it is. That's not a freeze. <laughs> <laughs> a freeze is I, I've flat, got all these sculpture words mixed up, but basically there is this sense of, of maybe something that's playing out over time. There is a legibility quality to it where you can read it. You can read it, it has, um, and that purple is allowing the the backing for that. Deep Deep, how about this one? This is such an epic composition. Yeah, this one is so intense. I actually don't know the scale of it, but there is so much going on here. But again, I think what Lauren touched upon with like negative space is really important. And the relationship between the purple and yellow are for me at least really drawing my eye around the piece there. I feel like the purple is placed in really key spot um, that helps even like establish depth in a way and the space. So the relationship here, and again, I'm seeing it a lot in the, um, in the shadows, especially in the negative space. I don't think that like the depth would work as well if that yellowish in the background didn't have some hints of the purplish red in the foreground um, to create our understanding of space and space relationship. But this piece is really ambitious. <laughs> this is such a great comment from Lisa who says, I don't see purple. I think each person can see colors differently. Exactly. It depends on who you are, what it is that you are trying to achieve in the work and how you use it. And so that's where I really think an artist's point of view comes across in terms of color. Now we do have a lot of other purple and yellow streams. For example, I did the series of streams where I did a purple and yellow still life. And there are many streams that cover the multiple stages. We also have this, in my opinion, it's the best color chart, but it's a complementary color chart using gouache that shows the gray shifts between purple and yellow. So I really recommend checking those out. This Google slideshow is also available on 
our YouTube video description below. So if you guys want to revisit some of these slides, you can definitely do that. Art Prof has a podcast. It's available on Spotify and also on iTunes. And in a few minutes, Deep D and Lauren will be hanging out in the Art Prof Discord. They will be in the post live streams channel. So I hope you guys can jump in there and join them. Subscribe to our channel so you can continue to grow and develop as an artist. And big thank you to our top Patreon supporters who are making it possible for us to keep Art Prof 100% free. I do want to point out, see that list, it's getting longer. And we're going to have to add a second column soon. I know. Who's going to be the person to begin <laughs> that second column? We're going to have to see. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.